Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. You're watching Earnings with BQ. And our guest for today is Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, CEO and MD of Hester Biosciences. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Um, sir, you all have had a quarter where your revenues have been up 19% aided by animal vaccines, but poultry has been a little muted. Uh, and profits are down 32% uh, quarter on, on quarter. So, uh, so if you could help us, uh, you know, help take us through what happened in the quarter and what are your plans ahead? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, our business is uh, divided into three segments. One is the animal healthcare, poultry healthcare, and pet. While pet division is just a new division which has been started nine months ago, we are yet to even uh, uh, crawl in a proper manner. So uh, that's something which we are yet working on and it should give good results. Uh, main business coming out of the animal healthcare and the poultry. The poultry division has uh, shown a dip in terms of a quarter to quarter comparison. The reason being the poultry industry in itself being in a little bit of a depressional condition wherein the costs have remained to be high while the output, the revenues for the poultry farmers in terms of eggs, meat have been low, low unable, uh, uh, you know, for them unable to even recover, recover this cost. As the uh, overall business has not been profitable. The, there, the, there are restrictions in them trying to uh, run the poultry in an optimal manner. At the same time, they have reduced their flock size. If a person is taking an X number of day old chicks, they would reduce it. Therefore, that all has impacted on our business. But nonetheless, if you look at uh, the overall yearly dip, the Q4 dip is lower than the yearly dip. It means that there is again a little bit of an upswing and we are very confident that such conditions can't remain forever and forever. And there is, um, we now see that there would be improvement. On the animal healthcare uh, division, it's been doing good. Specifically, the government of India has embarked on disease immunization programs wherein they have been supplying the PPR vaccine, the lumpy skin disease uh, vaccine, actually the goat pox vaccine to immunize uh, lumpy skin disease. So that is where we have been able to grow the business and taking it further from here. Both these divisions, we hope to run on a neck-to-neck -neck basis. It has always been our endeavor that both divisions contribute equally so that in future, whenever there are any recessionary conditions on any one of them, the other division helps us. We are more or less achieving that. The poultry used to contribute 100% five years ago. Now it's contributing around 60%. So we see overall growth faster growth in the animal healthcare division <clears throat> in the quarters to come, but poultry is also recovering. Okay. Uh, so for the animal healthcare portion, uh, I understand that this year, this quarter was an abnormal one because, uh, the, the, because of the lumpy skin disease that the epidemic sort of a thing that took place. So do you see this revenue sustaining and these kind of levels that would be maintained or there'll be some dip there as well? Uh, the immunization against lumpy skin disease has to be done on a year on your year okay. basis. Last four months we have been supplying, last six uh, to eight months. Uh, and now the time has again come in the next two to three months wherein they would have to be immunized again. It's okay. a yearly, less than a, a 10 monthly vaccine to be given. So we do foresee again uh, the continuation of the LSD mm -hmm. and on the PPR where we have won the government tender for the supplies of PPR vaccine, that business would also start. So overall, we do not see a dip in the animal healthcare division specifically for the vaccines. Okay. Uh, so on the pet care business, if you could elaborate and give us some uh, timelines as to how you're planning to expand and grow this business. Uh, the pet business world over in all the animal healthcare companies is actually the biggest division. We have just started it uh, nine months ago. We foresee a geometric progression jump in this division on a quarter to quarter basis. Of course, to reach the levels of the Western world in the 
pet health care sphere is going to be a long time. But uh, looking into the products that we have uh, launched, looking into the acceptance of our products, etc., I would not be able to give you an exact uh, financial forecast in terms of percentage, but definitely the bare minimum we should grow is at least two to three times uh, in the initial phase where the current base is low. Hmm. Uh, so, so this two to three times is expected in FY24? Yes. And so our margins have dipped by uh, 100 basis points, just the quarter I'm saying. And overall, I think as well uh, on a year to year basis. So what are we going to do and what is the kind of margin guidance that you would give us for the upcoming year? Margins have definitely dropped. Uh, dropped it is apparent from the financials that we have uh, published. Uh, the whole issue is that our business is divided into vaccines and health products. Hmm. Vaccines are high margin products. Health products are low margin products. Therefore, the more we start selling the health products, there is going to be a marginal drop on our uh, uh, gross margins but the cycles of health products are going to be more than that in vaccines because vaccines from the time we produce to the time we release it takes at least 60 to 65 days while in health products that cycle is between 50 uh, between 15 to 30 days cycle so and there is less complications less cost of production etc so overall we see that we will be able to uh, improve the EBITDA margins though there would be a lesser in gross margins and over this year we are now re-looking at what products we need to launch on the health product side and how to improve the profitability we are very conscious that we have been a high profitable company in the earlier years and it is an internal directive taken on by us a mandate mm -hmm. that we shall come back to those bottom line margins as what we have had two to three years ago and that would be by having more cycles on the health products um, because that we can improve our cycles so the business of health products will go up and the bottom line we will also improve okay so if you could give a number uh, for that uh, ma'am uh, giving a number uh, just at the beginning of the year at this point of time while we are preparing our budgets and all would be a little inappropriate and would be a little ad hoc. But all that we can say that the margins that we have had three years ago, we will definitely restore back to those margins in the next, uh, either in this financial year or in the next financial year latest. I could assure you of that. Okay. Uh, so we've had, uh, I think you'd mentioned that you're going to plan and double up the vaccine capacity. So where exactly? Because I think you all were planning to manufacture Covaxin as well. Now, since that is not happening, uh, there's some human vaccine that you all are planning. So if you could elaborate on those plans of how you all are planning to take these vaccines forward, what sort of growth are you envisaging on that front? Uh, yes, your uh, question, I would split it into two. One is the increase in production capacity of our animal vaccines, the ongoing. Uh, we would go on stream in this quarter itself and with the installation of our plant and machinery, which is ongoing in the next 60 days time, our capacity will go to two times. We are approximately 4.5 to 4.8 billion doses, we will reach approximately 9 billion doses in capacity within the existing animal vaccines uh, that we are already producing. Mm -hmm. On the co-vaccine side, yes, we have created a BSL-3 laboratory in consortium with the government of Gujarat. Uh, basically, it is to produce the bulk drug for uh, co-vaccine vaccine and supply to Bharat Biotech. But uh, with the downturn of the COVID vaccine requirement, thank God, uh, yeah. um, in a way, it's always good that diseases don't come. Now, we have a BSL-3 laboratory. We are in talks with uh, the Department of Biotechnology. If this laboratory could be converted into manufacturing the drug substance of other human vaccines, or also we could look into manufacturing a few animal vaccines. The discussions are going on 
and uh, it is a whole process wherein we have created for product A, now we want to repurpose it for product A, B, C. So the talks are on. When things finalize, we would definitely uh, inform you. But either way, this facility would, would be used and there are very few BSL-3 facilities in the country. <coughs> Sorry. It, so it would be used for optimum uh, production of vaccines and would be highly profitable vaccines. So when you're saying there's a doubling of capacity, so are we looking at newer geographies or is there so much demand in the existing geographies that we are already present in? Uh, what sort of revenues? I mean, do you also expect the revenues to double now with uh, so much of capacity, at least the vaccine side of revenues to double? Or, you know, what is your sort of sense of this whole thing? See, any vaccine plant, when you have to increase the capacity, it is not like a normal pharmaceutical plant that you add in a little bit of machinery and increase it by 20%, 30%. Because uh, the whole infrastructure needed is so complex that you cannot embark on two expansion plans. So you one has to go in for a bigger expansion and it would be spread over a longer period of time for us to come to 100% capacity as far as with the new uh, capacities that we have created. What we foresee is that in the next three years time, we should be able to at least reach to two and a half uh, times our turnover. We internally have projected, we are trying, all our efforts are, are put in there in three years time we touch 600 crores that is what our objective and uh, reasons for us to believe that we will be able to do is that one is the internal demand for vaccines against cattle sheep goat is increasing at a tremendous pace government is getting into immunization programs our health product business which is very small at this point of time and the market is very big. So all this would add together and uh, make us reach what we have forecasted for ourselves internally. Okay. Uh, so how much is the additional revenue that we are expecting from the PPR tender that we have won? Uh, the PPR tender is a government uh, document and... Uh, with the completion of 100% supplies of the PPR tender, our revenues could be anything between 25 crores to 35 crores. Okay. And so what is the expected launch date of the modified inactivated COIRSA vaccine? Uh, we have a few vaccines in the pipeline. One is the Coriza vaccine. One is the avian influenza vaccine. The uh, Coriza vaccine should be launched in the next two months' time. The avian influenza for poultry would be launched in around six to seven months of time. Okay. And uh, so are we, in terms of geographies as well, is our plan the same as it was or has been or are we looking at new geographies? We have three manufacturing plants, one in India, one in Nepal and one in Tanzania. Yeah. <clears throat> and from India, our focus is on the Indian market as well as export of poultry vaccines to the African continent. Mm. From uh, Nepal, we are focusing on the PPR vaccine, which is used uh, for eradication of PPR worldwide. And we are one of the major suppliers. So from Nepal, we will supply the PPR. It's an 100% export-oriented unit. And from our African plant, uh, we will produce... Uh, cattle, sheep, goat, swine vaccines, which today are not available in the African continent. And the, from Tanzania, we will export to the whole of the African continent. So poultry vaccines from India, large animal vaccines in Africa from the African plant and PPR vaccine from Nepal. And from Nepal, we have already got a few confirmed orders and we hope to triple our turnover from what it was last year. The Africa plant is just... Uh, getting on uh, to proper uh, systems, etc. We have already got five vaccines uh, registered. Registration is a big uh, uh, a action plan that we have to do in vaccines because it's in a very regulated business. So the delay in actually gearing up for business is the registration. But once that happens, we will be fast in supplying vaccines, specifically in the African continent. So how much time does the registration usually take? Uh, it takes anything from two months to two years, depending upon the country. Okay, so so by when are we expecting it? Uh, so uh, 
in east african countries we have already submitted our doses etc we expect that in the next 4 to 5 months our vaccines will be registered over there as far as nepal ppr vaccine is concerned as it is supplied through fao we do not require country, uh, country uh, registration and we can supply uh, directly as we are a registered supplier to fao okay. so i think in africa business should pick up in the next 6 months time okay so a lot of approvals that are in the pipeline for fy24 yes yes it appears that there are many subjective elements that i would have spoken on the call with you ma'am without addressing exact figures which yes. you have been asking me but things are subjective and uh, it's a path of uh, creating a good foundation and in a few months all these things will turn into tangible business which we at some point of time we shall be happy to even talk to you about would love to chat with you again sir thank you so much for joining us it was a pleasure thank you ma'am